Joining us today on Adam versus the Man is Ned Kelly. He is the chair of the Libertarian Party of Kansas, doing God's work, filling <laughs> out forms, and being extremely patient with a bullshit political process that we know is holding back humanity, doing his best to help his candidates and his party fight for justice. He's had three of his candidates now. Kansas LP has been well overrepresented here on Adam versus the Man so far this election season. And, and we had to go, well, who's really behind this? If you recall, we had Jason Buckley, Matt Clark, and Rick Parsons on the show, all Kansas LP candidates. And so it's, it's, uh, it's truly an honor to have uh, the man behind these. I don't, I don't know how much credit Ned really deserves here, but I know that being the state chair of a libertarian party is not just a, a job that, that's challenging, that requires extreme patience with the forms and, and, and the bureaucracy that you deal with and all of that nonsense, but also the herding cats phenomena that, that, that is any libertarian party job dealing with infiltrators and, and subversives from the old parties and, and still doing what we can to take advantage of the free platform of politics to run candidates and, and get our message out to a, a greater audience. So, Ned, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing this morning? I am well, sir. Thanks for having me. Actually, before we get to that, I have a beef. I'm a I'm a vegetarian, but I have a beef with producer Jim. <laughs> Uh-oh. May, may right. I address this? All right. Please. So, last week, you had a an episode, I think it was earlier in the week, you had a contest. You asked for an analogy, you know, complete the blank, fill in the blanks, because it was all about Donald Trump is removing the, the troops and all that. And the contest was Trump is to peace as blank is to blank. You remember that? Right. Yeah. Okay. And I submitted, I submitted <laughs> an entry. I submitted my own metaphor, my own analogy into that. Producer Jim said it was accurate but not funny and i would like the chance to describe and tell him why it is funny if i may sir please well tell us the analogy first. Well, yeah, so people were submitting one. stuff like as oil is to water or i don't know bong water or whatever you know lots of funny <laughs> funny things and i went a different route with it i tried to be a little more break the fourth wall with it i said trump is to peace as obama is to peace yeah. Huh? I went yeah. a different way. Now, so what I did yeah. there was I didn't play by the rules, man. I I <laughs> broke it. I busted it up. My analogy was to your contest as Adam is to the man. <laughs> My analogy yes, no. was you... to the contest as metaphors are to similes. <laughs> you could you could yes, say my no. my I'll just do one more and I'll stop. My <laughs> Analogy was to your contest as Trump is to peace. <laughs> yes, no, Ned, you are absolutely right to point that out. And I, I am happy to, by way of uh, appropriate customer service compensation here, offer you complimentary membership in our producers club that you would have won if you had, if you had officially won the contest on that day. Um, we'll put an asterisk next to the name of the winner. And, and say that really Ned was the, the rightful victor that day. No, you, you are absolutely right. And this is so important as, as libertarian voices, not just to be funny, because we are we are funnier than, than the duopoly stuffed shirts by a long shot. Uh, but but your, your point there, uh, it, it was a bit of a serious one. And it's an important, serious thing to be pointed out by, and this is, this is really, a critical, critical part of the libertarian message is that there's essentially no meaningful difference between the blue flavored and the red flavored wings of the American Socialist Party masquerading as two separate parties called Republicans and Democrats. Yes, sir. And that Obama was hugely, bigly fake anti-war, apps uh, top to bottom. And it, it, you know, I was pointing this out when he was president every time I, I could since he won the, the Peace Prize that Barack Obama has killed more human beings with drone strikes than all other Nobel Peace Prize winners 
combined. That that never ceases to get old for me. But to your point, Donald Trump's now fake anti-war posturing. You just go, yeah, Obama did the same thing. When are Americans going to stop falling for it? So, Ned, I put that question to you. Thank you. And largely because of Obama, because of eight years of Obama and you know, people on the left who might have had an inkling of being anti-war may have previously during the Bush years said we should bring those troops home. But thanks to eight years of um, where the left just got used to turning their back to that. Now, now they don't even care about it. Now, Trump, they give him a pass. Nobody even talks. About, I thought, well, when Trump comes into office at, after he was elected and before inauguration, I remember saying, well, at least I'll get my anti-war left friends back. At least they'll come back out of the woodwork and start being anti-war again. But they're gone. They never came back. <sighs> yeah. Now, now, Ned, this gets to one of the bigger sort of abstract challenges that we face as libertarians, because I, I know you have been in the game long enough. You, you can share some of our frustration and well, you can argue logic, you can argue reasoning and, and policy to statists all you want. So you're blue in the face and they come back with logical fallacy after logical fallacy to justify their subservience to the duopoly. And it, 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 what, what that tells me is that people who vote for Republicans and Democrats don't do so out of reason. And I want to point this out, that even our friend Jason Burmis, who was behind the biggest first, the biggest main 9-11 truth documentary, Loose Change. I had him on the show last week on 9-11. I watched it. First I watched that. Big, Awesome. Thank you. Our first big censored show. And after all of his wisdom and understanding of how screwed up the current authority power structure is, even he comes out and says, I'm voting for Trump out of fear. And, yeah. and I have to hand it to Jason. What makes him special, not in this, not just his, his worldview and general insight to what he calls the predator class, well, I, I would call the super class of, you know, the several hundred or thousand most rich, powerful string pullers in the world today. But he was able to admit in a way that 90 plus percent of duopoly voters are not able to, that they're not voting for rational cause. They're voting for emotional reasons. They're voting out of fear. Ned, as, as someone organizing in the Libertarian Party and, and promoting candidates, how do we address this deeper issue you know, I, I want to get up and, and, and as a candidate, not just argue issues. I want to speak to that deeper psychological grip that the duopoly has on America. How do how do we as libertarians break that emotional stranglehold? That's great. And kudos to you for that um, on Thursday that, or Friday when you did that, because I felt that there with you like, oh, man, he wants to get in there. Um and you handled it well. You didn't you didn't beat your head against the wall too much. And you actually turned it into a, both of you. You turned it into an actual conversation. And he even this is Jason Berman. He even admitted he said, well, don't get the I don't want you to get the idea that I'm proud of this. <laughs> don't 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 think that I'm doing this and, and I'm bragging about it. So there was at least that I tend to not get into it. I tend to not try to argue with people or convince them or persuade them. I move on. So if I'm if I'm having whether it's online or in person and there turn starts to become a debate, I move on. I, I say to well to myself and to other supporters or volunteers, it's not our job to go out there and convert people into libertarians or convert people into Joe Jorgensen supporters or in the state of Kansas running for US Senate, Jason Buckley supporters. Our job, little plug there, thank you very much. Our job is to find them. It, they're already out there. Spend most of your efforts, most of your time and, and resources simply finding the ones that are already out there and just get them connected, get them plugged in, and, and so they can participate. Yeah, well said. So I, I want to share something uh, that, that you made for Facebook from the Libertarian Party of Kansas page that, that went I'm pretty viral recently. You know, I mean, considering how much 
censorship we as libertarians face on social media. You had a post that got 1.4 thousand shares uh, in, in less than two weeks. And I, I think this is still going around because I only heard about this when, because uh, I, I stay the hell away from Facebook, but I'm going to put this on Twitter and so, you know, other places, I'm sure. Uh, Instagram, because they're not owned by Facebook or corrupt or anything <laughs> like that, right? Um, yeah, but uh, y- you created the 2020 Voters Guide. Jim, if you could get that link from the Telegram chat, awesome, and get that up full Ooh, screen. Yeah. This, is, this is so powerful. And, and and you know, it's it's funny how you, you have to use these graphics to reach people. And I'm going to read this for our audio audience. It's a a flow chart, and the the headline is, or the title is, 2020 Voter's Guide. And the first question is, do you like endless wars, government spying, pot smokers in prison, crony capitalism, yes or no? And if you say yes to those things, it sends you down the left side of this chart, which is ironically appropriate. And then the next question is, orange man bad, question mark. (laughs) If yes, vote for Biden. If no, vote for Trump. And so that's, yeah, for the people who like that, that's that's pretty well how the decision is made. If you say no to those things, then you have the question of the economy. Are you for socialism or free markets? Well, if you're for socialism, vote Hawkins, if not Joe Jorgensen. And and there's there's so much more to this. I could rant for hours, but for the, the basic voting public, this this really does lay it bare. Why do you think this was so successful in in going viral? Yeah, and I was a bit surprised. I I put it together in you know I want to say five minutes, but actually using paint on on my computer and trying to do those little things and make triangles took <laughs> took me a, at least an hour. Uh, but the whole idea kind of <laughs> send came it to me next time. I'm, I'm Photoshop handy. I'll get this out for you in two minutes. Cool, cool. <laughs> But uh, yeah, just came to me quickly. I, I at first I was going to say that one side, you know, the if you do like, you know, all the mil- all the violence from government, then you have to choose between the red team and the blue team. I was going to say just flip a coin. You know, cuz <laughs> what what is the difference? But then I wanted to say well, there is there is this tribalistic identity politics. They do have something really entrenched where they think there's a difference. Um, and, and, and ideologically, the 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 voters themselves, the population, do probably have some some actual differences. But I'm referring to the actual politicians, of course, that where there is no difference. So yeah, orange man, orange man, bad. And I didn't invent that. That that right. you know, has been going around. No, you're, um, you're right. Because if, if it wasn't for these personalities that we could, you know, a, a, a put plug into this, you could have just said. Is your favorite color closer to blue or red on the color wheel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and as to why it did go viral, or at least by my standards, what I would consider viral, maybe because it's so simple and because, you know, there's you got the the re- the blue, the red, the gold and the green, and that matches up nicely and and, and it clicks with something and and then they can reshare it. And sh- and it's it's just a way of showing. Now, I, I want to point out that. I didn't mean this as a jab against the Green Party or Howie Hawkins by any means. I uh, disclaimer: it feels like I have to say it. I do not want you to vote for Howie Hawkins. I'm going to vote for Joe Jorgensen. That being said, I encourage anyone who's you know more of a socialist or you know progressive in that sense. Um, not to vote Democrat, don't vote Biden, vote for Howie Hawkins, I, vote for the Green Party. I want to support that and promote them and all the other new new, you know, third parties. Get away from the legacy parties. Well, I, you know, I would I would differentiate myself on that point just ever so slightly. And, and I'm with you on like not actively supporting. Uh, I think right now it really is important in order to overthrow the duopoly that we concentrate forces. Those of us who want to overthrow the duopoly that we, we come together around the LP. That being said, I am grateful for Howie Hawkins. I've met him, I've sat next to him on stage in a debate. I think he, he's another former Marine. I think he's uh, an honest principle dude as are most Green Party activists. And uh, I, I definitely respect that they are uh, a force for justice in the world and, and, and giving 
uh, people who are truly liberal an honest alternative to the Democrats. But I would say as a counter from the libertarian perspective that uh, we're voluntarists, you know, in the libertarian party platform, statement of principles, it says where governments exist, they must be voluntary. So if you're for coercive socialism, if you're for violent socialism, and you really believe that we have to force those economic policies on people, okay, vote green. But if you go, if you, if if we get a libertarian country, you can still have your voluntary systems of socialism at the community level, at the commune level, at an individual level, at a business or organizational level, and we are not going to use any force as libertarians to stop you from having that. Now, Ned, we we've just got a minute left here, so I, I want to ask you one more question to wrap so, up. So you're here. not going to say a vote for Hawkins is a vote for for Trump or Biden. Of you're course not. not. No, good, good, no. Good. Um, I will say, though, if you're voting for the duopoly, you're throwing your vote away. Uh, but yeah, Ned, so you're the chair of the Libertarian Party of Kansas. And a big part of, of what you are doing is recruiting and supporting candidates uh, and activists, but especially candidates to carry the banner and, and to, to use the platform of politics to advocate for libertarianism. What's your pitch to someone who might be watching this who would say, oh, I, I could never, uh, as my, as my, uh, what my, my political science professor and undergrad, Professor Jack Pitney, who's still a, a good friend of mine, he said, I would rather boil alive in a vat of Senator Biden's hair grease. No, he's talking about someone else. Senator Biden's hair grease or something like that than, than ever see my name on a ballot. But I would love to see him run. And there are a lot of people who have that appropriate reflexive uh, sense of disgust when, when they think about being involved in politics. What would you say to someone like that to encourage them to run for office as a libertarian? I say, I'm going to boil you in my own hair grease if you don't run for office. And well, it was again, Senator Byrd, Senator Byrd the, the, the racist old senator. I would rather boil alive in a vat of Senator Byrd's hair grease than, than ever see my name on a ballot. Senator Byrd's hair grease is to liberty as Trump is to <laughs> peace. Uh, I did see that was a callback, sir. That was a callback. I would say well, every that, little man. bit helps. Every little bit helps. You can run for office. You can do an all out gangbusters campaign and go knocking on doors and raise money and, and do your best to actually win. Uh, as Matt Clark here in Kansas, District 23rd, Matt Clark for Kansas is, or you can be a paper candidate. They get, just get the libertarian name on the ballot because that certainly helps too, or anywhere in between. Every little bit helps. Um, run local, especially if you're going to try to win, you know, run for those smaller and local races. But we also, for example, in the state of Kansas, we need a statewide race to get at least 1% of the vote so that we can maintain our minor party status so that we can maintain ballot access for the following two years uh, for the presidential election, or we, ha or we would be one of those states that has to go out there and collect all those signatures. So uh, that's important too. So in a nutshell, yes, every little bit helps. You're making a difference whether you win or lose. You're, you're, you're moving the, how do you call it? Moving the, the ball down uh, for <laughs> further for, for, towards freedom. <laughs> No, that's great. Moving the ball down the field and taking advantage of this free platform to get our message out. So if you guys want to hook up with Ned, uh, check him out on Facebook with the Libertarian Party of Kansas at Kansas LP. The website is really easy to remember, lpks.org. And uh, for those of you not in Kansas, I, I hope you'll check out your state or local Libertarian Party. It's a great time to get involved at this point in the election cycle to be promoting Joe, Joe, Joe Jorgensen and Spike Cohen, our Libertarian Party presidential and vice presidential candidates, and uh, to have fun re reaching out to your community. So, Ned, thank you for everything you do to, for the party and for your candidates and for joining us this morning. Right back at you. My mom has been watching, so could you keep the swearing down a bit? <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely Thanks. freaking welcome for me being politically <laughs> correct as possible this morning. Thank you, Ned. Thank you. Peace. <laughs>